Curious device. Stand by for teleport. What? No, 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 tele no teleporting in the wrong franchise. Welcome to the first of two wrap up videos for Blake's seven before we move on. Let's start with continued thoughts on the ending. After having some time to consider it, I really like how it bookends with the first episode where we come across the just slaughter of a rebel cell by the Federation. And in that case, we're outside observers, like Blake at the time. It's like, I don't know who these people are, but this looks terrible. The difference is, in this case, we knew them. And it kind of goes full circle with that first episode. And this time, it hits pretty hard. I put a Patreon poll out of what did you think happened in the end? I gave a few options and then also post in the comments if you have a different theory. The winner so far is Orak is the only survivor now in the hands of the Federation. Yeah, that's kind of my theory too. Zinfad is wondering, what if the Federation officers were ordered to take them alive and the next series had survivors but controlled by Servalon, sent out on missions to further her rise for power? I like this theory, because the first few episodes, you know, they're trying to fight the control and then eventually they break free. Kurt pointed out, well, from the point of view of production, it probably makes sense that Avon didn't die. They need him for the next series. Solid point. Simon pointed out that Orak was probably somewhere safe, off hidden. So we don't know what happened to Orak. Graham propounded that maybe this is another one of Servalon's convoluted plans, and we don't actually see Avon being shot. So maybe it goes to black and it's Servalon showing up and taking out those officers because, as we've seen before, she has this kind of interesting dynamic with Avon where she keeps saying she wants him taken out, but every single time she doesn't kind of admires him. So that could have been Servalon sweeping in with her guards going, I'm sorry, what are you doing? He's mine. Some great ideas here. Post in the comments if you have your own. I'm going to be checking out some Blake's seven bloopers now. <laughs> you could go in where we came out. Hunde, if you issue your men with these, you'll have a fighting chance. What are they? But what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> right, Orak. Prospects for organic humanoid life are now secured. <coughs> How many more of you? Are there? Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I'm not complaining. Mind you. Cut. <laughs> I should have left that in. Oh dear. <laughs> yes, the hair problem. That makes you can, don't you? I know what it makes us. <laughs> Useless. Circuit diagram. What? <laughs> this isn't a ship. It's a tomb. They, whoever they are or were, were or are. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ha, 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 ha.
Next up, I'll be choosing my favorite episode of each season and then an overall series pick. Keep in mind, I'm not saying these are the best episodes with my critic hat on. These are just the ones I personally enjoyed watching the most and they spoke to me. You probably remember Rules of Luton made it into my top picks of Space 1999 to a lot of people's horror. I like trees! First up we have season one. This did such a good job of introducing the world, the characters, the spaceship. They hit the ground running. This reminded me a lot of Battlestar Galactica Reimagined season one in that it was just so good. Solid, right from episode one. My runner-up overall pick is episode eight, Duel. I was really enjoying the mutoids and especially this one. Plus, it had that haunting line, the dead outnumber the living. Ooh. I adore mystical science fiction, and this was such a great... Is it fantasy? Is it sci-fi? We don't know. There also was some fun Jenna action. She wasn't stuck in the teleport room again. The best overall of this season for me was episode two, Spacefall. This was such a great story. We were still in the prison ship, trying to get away, trying to get allies. <laughs> Things were not going well. And we saw the first kind of build of the team. The Liberators introduced great model work this episode. Villa was absolutely hilarious. This was the episode where I really fell in love with the show. The pilot was like, whoa, but yikes. And then this episode I went, okay. Let's go. Season two. This was a difficult one to narrow down favorites because it was a really good season. Great stories right from episode one. They definitely kept the momentum started in the first season. Runner up is episode nine, Countdown. There was major Avon backstory, I think for the first time, which ended up setting up so much for later, including the final episode. It was stressful to watch because the planet was about to be wiped out potentially, the ice dripping. It's one of those edge of your seat like episodes. The best overall for this season for me was episode four, Horizon. I loved the idea of a Federation brainwashed young ruler pushing back and reestablishing his original culture. Plus there were some fantastic Orac scenes and in case you hadn't noticed, Orak is my favorite character. <laughs> Great acting this episode as well. Season three. I absolutely love Dana. So even though we lost some other key characters, having her join the crew really helped transition the show for me. Much like Vala's character did in the later seasons of Stargate, where we lost main characters. But then in popped this really engaging person that you want to watch. The runner-up was episode six, City at the Edge of the World. I know a lot of people did not like how Colin Baker was chewing the scenery, but I thought it was hilarious. Villa gets to shine and be the hero. I kind of wish that he had gone with his girlfriend to like Villa World and had a happy ending and is off living his own life. But he was probably right. Eventually he would have gotten bored and wished he had stayed behind for glory and might have regretted it. But I like to think somewhere out there in an alternate universe, Villa is just happily off on that other planet. The best for me was episode eight, Rumors of Death. The acting here was outstanding. We got kind of the closing chapter of Avon's love betrayal story of what really happened there, some great moments with the Federation troop discussions, and the location they shot in for this episode was just absolute perfection. Season four, this was rough, meaning we lost Zen and Callie and the Liberator all in one go. That was hard. But the stories in this season often felt very imaginative. They didn't always succeed, but I could definitely respect that they were trying to push the envelope a bit. And I think if they had had more time in the writer's room and to shoot them, they could have been really good. Even with the addition of Su Lin, 
who I adore. <laughs> out of all the characters, she's the one I would ask out. This is just not as strong as the other seasons to me. I still enjoyed it and I would rewatch it, but it's probably my least favorite of all the seasons. The runner up episode here is nine, Sand. Servalon was being magnificent, as always. Tarrant actually got to shine a bit here. It's one of the few times I liked his character. <laughs> Plus, the idea of sentient sand is so much fun. When I'm thinking of which episode I want to rewatch in this season, sand is the first one that comes to mind. But the best overall, in my opinion, is episode three, Traitor. The return of Servalon is done so deliciously well. There are some fantastic combat scenes in that muddy, desolate environment and a truly terrifying storyline. This was the moment when you're like, oh, we thought we basically defeated the Federation. <laughs> nope. All right, overall, favorite season, number two, but I really wish Dana was in it. Can we just transplant Dana and Su Lin into season two? The runner-up of overall favorite is Spacefall. I really like that episode. But the number one, Rumors of Death. Yeah. That to me is just the quintessential episode of Blake 7. Feel free to disagree with me in the comments. Next time, we'll be looking at the costumes. Mostly Servalon. <laughs>